consumption model of broadcast is changing massively. People want everything, anywhere, all the time. The cost of the content keeps rising and the need for more content continues to rise. Fox Sports is growing continuously and we're maxed out on all the freelancers in the industry. Uh, we hire all the facilities that are in the country. In Australia, given the population somewhere in the order of 25 million people, we're spread across the mass the size of America and pretty much located on the East Coast and West Coast. So often we have to send people for games across kind of both sides. Like Perth, you fly there one day, you work one day, you catch the red eye, red eye home, you're out for three days. We wanted to test the assumption that the connectivity and the technology of compression and IP and the transition to IP was at a place whereby we could realistically realise the dream of remote production. We know how we use our freelancers. We have 12 years of history that shows us who we move where. And when we stood up in front of Fox Sports and we put the proposal together, it was all based around the Anyone Anywhere concept. Anyone Anywhere, the traditional outside broadcast method of workflow where commentators, all the camera operators, everything that you see out in the field is still there. But we've removed our production guys who produce out of the hub. It's actually totally achievable to have people split across the network and put them anywhere. You can have a truck in one city, another city, or all three cities that you can put production teams in, whereby two people can be in city A, three people can be in city B, and three people can be sitting at one of the two hubs and they can all work together. IP as a new technology is capable of delivering this, and everybody I would say it was dreaming about the potential, but nobody has done it before. So bringing the Hub project to life was a very groundbreaking change for everybody. A very, very large part of the complexity of this project is that at the time, the core processing and the core technologies didn't exist. Along with the underlying standards of SMPTE 2110 were not fully ratified. technology we're using, the IP technology we're using wasn't ratified, wasn't real, you couldn't buy anything. Uh, this project has really driven the broadcast industry to help us try and um, beat that and try and bring that forward. With the VLAN Matrix we could deliver for the first time in the industry a virtualized solution that could generate multiple functions out of the same hardware platform which has never been done before. So it was groundbreaking and changing not only for Lavo, it was also for the industry. At the time, we had completed several 4K system projects based on our own IP technology called NMI. Our challenge was to do this with NEP using ST2110. Interoperability is another difficulty. But as we are taking active roles both in standardization as well as the interoperability testing, we are very happy to say that for NEP's IOB project, all the tests were concluded in good results. So the plan was to build two broadcast facilities, one in Sydney and one in Melbourne, and we consider these the one facility because they share all their resources. Then on top of that, the network had to be developed from scratch. Not one of the venues was connected on this new network. Telstra was chosen in the end. They rolled out a network to almost every one of our venues that we go to out of those 29. Those venues are connected at 50 gigabits a second and some of them unfortunately more regional venues are at 10 gigabits a second. And for those venues we use slight compression. Everywhere else we're uncompressed. The first testing where we realized this really was all going to work and it was going to be possible and in many places the network and the technology was outperforming where we thought it would be. It was a great relief to know that uh, we were going to be able to deliver this. Well that was amazing. It was a lot of fun. It was just like being there. Uh, I couldn't uh, really fault the latency, uh, the live feel or, or anything. I felt like I was there. Commentary, talkback, EBS uh, all worked as if we were at the OB. Uh, so no, a lot of fun. You look at the time frame between January 2017 and where we are today, I mean, it's pretty significant to move that fast. In 14 months, we've basically built two halves, four trucks, seven hybrid kits, and all the other stuff that goes with it. We can be proud of the team that worked on this. Um, you know, this is uh, a small team that have put together something that's just a world first and has been a fantastic thing to be part of.
today is the first time that we're live from the, the full final Sydney control room. It's funny, I mean, you know, tonight we're live from 4,000 kilometres away. Perth is, you know, a significant distance away from where we are, and yet the only thing that's in Perth are the cameras. It is unbelievable that I can be in one state, yet the OB is in a completely another state of Australia. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to this TB broadcast in Perth. We're in the hub here at Redfern. Uh, a few statistics. It was really important to NEP to make sure that the user experience was exactly the same. FM to director. Yes, James. The um, bus isn't coming in until 5:30. Okey dokes. Well, whenever they get here, they'll they'll do that. Uh, one thing we do have to do uh, after we've done. We that, do that using uh, video conferencing, and you'll see video conferencing cameras all around both facilities and all around the trucks. We put the camera operators on their cameras a little bit early, they look at the return, as if they would look at the return for their program or for something else that's happening. And we've got a key that we use called our meeting key. When we press that, the director camera is put basically on every screen in the IP truck so that everyone in any cabin can see him and be part of that meeting. Up until today, it's been 1,600 kilometres that the hub has been working on, but today it is 4,452. So it's a world first, so congratulations for being part of it. Thank you very much. Someone's clapping, Murray's clapping. Clap yourselves, give yourselves a round of applause. Ready, three out of mix. Bravo, roll, bravo. Two, find me number five for the Coast, please. It's a fully redundant, fully resilient, a fully monitored network. By not using any compression, we have the lowest latency, we have the best picture quality. You're looking at our product now, and it is. It's, I actually think it's visually better because we're uncompressed to the Sydney hub. The biggest difference between this truck and our traditional trucks is there's fewer video patching, less BNCs and more network patching. So we have a lot of uh, Opticon cables that are sending uh, video over fibre optics around the venue, as well as our main uh, six Opticons coming in from Telstra, which delivers all of the audio, video and control, uh, in this case, 4,000 kilometres from Perth to Sydney. Happy trucks are quite special to me. Um, you know, we, we could have put the equipment in the Sprinter van at the end of the day, but the anyone, anywhere concept and, and, and everything that goes with that needed to be in a space that was appropriate for everything that we needed to do, right? So, you know, in terms of the truck itself, um, it's 13 metres long, it doesn't expand because it doesn't need to. We still had the trucks made in the UK by the same guys that make the big trucks. And the great thing about that, of course, is that they look and feel the same inside. And so they're small, but they're still very well equipped and they're very nice. Um, every single piece of technology, of course, is totally different from any of our other trucks. We've got Rack 1, which has all our camera racks in it. These are our V matrices, which are the um, main way that we encapsulate and de-encapsulate baseband video. And then our VMU and servers and power. We're moving all the audio signals from the venue back to the hub, but we generate the audio that the commentators hear from the venue. These faders on the screen are a representation of the faders on the truck in Perth. As Alex moves the faders here, that's what's happening in Perth. So this is our network operations centre. It's a cross between master control and our network operations centre. The biggest difference in here is that we're not monitoring traditional broadcast signals the way we ordinarily would. This is a new facility for this type of role. This is the sort of thing you would find, the monitoring tools that you see behind me, you would find in a telecom business or a business that's really not necessarily broadcast, but IT specific. This is where the fusion of IT and broadcast come together and this room's been created because of it. So, you know, if you go to a network operations center in Telstra, you see a bunch of computer screens, no pictures, because they're not monitoring anything. But here you see a fusion of both because we're doing both. Camera one's clear, thank you, good night, well done. Seven, we will be using you for a news cross. This is the future of TV production. There's absolutely no reason why any broadcast can't be covered like this from now on. It's easy for everyone, the broadcast isn't compromised, and it is a lot more efficient. We want to really improve the production quality. We want to make it better, so we now have more consistent crew. We have consistent crew because we don't travel people as much. People are less tired, people are more familiar with the environment they're in. And if you look at that alone, sure, it's great to have the cost savings, and it's great to have the benefits that come with that, but it's fantastic to have a more efficient environment with crew that are familiar that do the same projects over and over again. I'm super excited that the technology is now available to us, that we can, we can achieve this. It's, it's phenomenal that we've got to where we are so quickly. With the director and the producer saying, you know, they couldn't really tell the difference if they're on the back of the truck outside the stadium or, or in this facility in Sydney, that, that was pretty, pretty amazing. Ultimately, we will get to a place where there isn't a differentiation between the outside broadcast, the hub facility and the, t and the broadcast centre. It would be one 
enabling us to access more metadata and use that to drive new forms of content. We want to run trials from Los Angeles, we'd like to run trials from Tokyo. Asia Pacific as a general region makes sense and if we can connect this site to those sites and we can start sharing our resources and we can start sharing our people across you know internationally, wow, think of what can be achieved. Thank you.